we're starting our recording now. We play it uh, without um, recording. We're not allowed uh, to record other people's song without songs or music without their permission. So we do not want to violate that copyright agreement. And um, so we can stay online with this online church. But that song, you can find it on YouTube at um, and look for Richard Smallwood and Vision, the healing song. And in fact, if you email me later on, I'll send you the link to that particular song where you can download the video and save and play it over and over and over again. If you're sick in your body, God will heal you. And, 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 and proclaim your healing. Proclaim your healing. Speak faith. God's word will not return unto him void or empty. So we just praise God. I want to welcome all of you. Oh, look at you. Uh, all of you from, from all over the nation. And uh, we expect David to come on from Dubai a little bit later on. And uh, we just thank God for what God is doing. David Carter joins us from the nation of Dubai. We have people online and live in Kenya and in Uganda and other nations, people in Jamaica, uh, uh, people in U Europe every now and then. Annika Sorensen comes on from Sweden. And so this is an international, worldwide ministry, and God's got a plan for you. It is so good to see you. Uh, soon we're going to have our prayer, and then uh, soon we're going to ask the uh, Mrs. Jackie Fisher to read the scripture, but we just want to thank God for what he's doing, what he's doing. I praise God. I praise God. Visit uh, my, our website. I put that in the chat room. Uh, visit our website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com, and tell everybody about what God is doing in this ministry. Tell people they can go on and, and speak read about the online church and what we're doing and also look at our uh, the great ministry in Kenya. We're building a church in Kenya, ladies and gentlemen. They are actually starting the construction tomorrow. Construction begins on our new church in western Kenya. Uh, Bishop Elijah, he is so excited. I'm excited. Uh, the people have been waiting for a building They've been worshiping under the trees and on the ground in rain and wind, no matter what the elements are. They've been worshiping under the trees, and now they're going to have their own building, ladies and gentlemen, where people from all over the countryside can come to that building. They can come to that building and receive the word of God. Not only that, but God will give them water. Uh, we anticipate soon to dig a well where people from all over the countryside in western Kenya can come and get free water, water from the Lord. And so it's going to be a training center where pastors can come and get training in the back to basic school of ministry. And uh, they get the training as they work towards their ordination. And people from all over the, the East, East, actually East Africa can come there and get training and go out and evangelize. And witness. So this is a great work. This is um, part of your part of this work. Your tithes and offerings help to do this. And I thank God for your tithes and offerings. We don't mention tithes and offerings that much. We don't even appeal for tithes and offerings. But I thank those of you who do send your tithes and offerings, and uh, you, you'll see the the physical proof of your of your gifts when they raise up this great church in. Kenya, where people can now have their own building, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is the online church, and the online church, we work with the brick-and-mortar church. In fact, when people get saved, we uh, often plug them into a brick-and-mortar church, a place where they can come and fellowship with others and, and, and feel the love of other people and get under the training of a local pastor. You see, we're part of the body of Christ. We reach out to others. And, and, and try to bring them into a place where they can be blessed by God, where they can grow, where they can get training, where they can get the love of the saints. That's what the church ought to be doing. And so we thank God for that. Well, bless God, bless God. We praise God for all 
of his goodness. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Richard Smallwood says, I tried him and I know him. He's a healer. He's a doctor. He's a lawyer. Richard Smallwood said, he, he tried him. He said before he wrote that song, he was in the pits. He was in the pits. Have you ever been there in the pits? And, and he didn't know if he could, get, he could get out. But God gave him that song. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of great songs have been written by people who have been in the pits. Many years ago, a man, uh, a preacher in Chicago, wrote the song, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weary, I'm worn. And, and, and you know, the situation that caused him to write that song, he had just, he was on preaching a revival in another city, and he just got the word that his wife had died from a stroke. His wife died from a stroke. And in the depths of despair, the writer took pen in hand and wrote, Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. Ladies and gentlemen, many songs have been written in the, in the, in the depths of despair. Praise God. Uh, uh, we thank God for, for uh, John Newton, who wrote many of our gospel songs that are found in our hymnals. And, and, and uh, he, in the midst of despair, wrote some of his songs. And so we look back in the hymn, at the hymnals, Fanny J. Crosby. She couldn't even see. She was blinded from the time that she was six weeks old, and she lived to be 80-some years old, never saw a thing. But in one of her songs, in the midst of her blindness, uh, uh, she wrote, uh, 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 one of the greatest hymns of all time. One of the greatest hymns of all times. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, she said. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, she said. This is a blind lady writing this. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. And then she even said in her song, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. She saw visions of the rapture bursting on her sight. What sight? She could see better than a whole lot of Christians could see. She saw Jesus. She saw him in the spirit. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you might be hurting out there. You might be under oppression. You might be under afflict affliction. They may be threatening for foreclosure on your home. They may be about to repo your car. You might have gotten a, a report from the doctor and it's a negative report, but don't you give up. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Stacy Baggett, for you and your family out there uh, in the region of Birmingham, Alabama, the best is yet to come. Don't you dare give up. Don't quit. Don't quit now. Don't quit now. God is moving by his spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited about this. I ain't preaching yet, Jackie Fisher. I'm not preaching yet, but we'll get there. Ladies and gentlemen, let me share this story, and then we're going to prayer, and then we hear our scripture, and then we get the, 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 the designated assigned sermon for today. Just recently, last week, ladies and gentlemen, last week, the Boko Haram, the terrorist group in Nigeria, that's been sweeping that nation and going into Cameroon and other nations. And, and many of my friends have been impacted by the Boko Haram. They're killing people. They're killing Christians. They're Muslims. And they're killing Christians. And so they rounded up 400 children. They had their mothers with, with them. They had killed the fathers. And then they threatened these children and their mothers, we're going to kill you. And so they designated that uh, at a certain time they would line the children and the mothers up against the wall and kill them if they would not deny Jesus, if they would, if they would not uh, recant and, 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 and deny Jesus. They said, deny Jesus and you'll live. And so they talked to the mothers, separated the mothers from the children, and said to the mothers, we're going to kill your children, we're going to kill you. And uh, they were already lining up some of the children uh, 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 on the wall, 
and then the children started running into the house of the building where the mothers were being interrogated by the Boko Haram. And the, the children said, we've just seen Jesus. We've just seen Jesus. Jesus came to us and he told us everything's going to be all right. No, no, don't give up. Don't cave in. Don't recant. Don't deny Jesus. We've just seen Jesus. And so the Boko Haram took the children and the mothers out, lined them against the wall, and were about to command the soldiers to shoot the children and then hack their bodies to pieces with machetes. And then there was a uh, there came from the Boko Haram soldiers screams and, and shrieks and, and, and horrible screams coming from them as they scream, snakes, 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 snakes in our heads, snakes biting our heads, snakes. And, 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 and they saw the Boko Haram saw snakes all around them. And then uh, 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 one man died of a heart attack. He fell over with a heart attack. And, uh, and another soldier reached over to pick up his gun to shoot those children and the mother, the mothers. And a little four-year-old, ladies and gentlemen, a four-year-old child put her hand on that gun and on that soldier's hand and said, no, no, you don't want to do that. Don't you see all those people in white surrounding us? No, you don't want to do that. We're surrounded by people in white. No, no. And so that soldier did not pick up his gun. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about miracles. God still delivers his people. God still heals his people. God still saves people. Ladies and gentlemen, despite what you hear in America and in other nations, God is alive. God is alive. And people are seeking him and seeing Jesus and experiencing miracles. Muslims are getting saved. In Muslim countries, they're having dreams. I have a friend in, in, in Cameroon. She was a Muslim. She was trained in Muslim, in, in, in Islam. She was, she, she was uh, trained to hate Christians. And then she said one day <clears throat> she had a dream. Jesus appeared to her in a dream. She had never heard the gospel. And this is a dear friend of mine in Cameroon. She said she had never heard the gospel. And Jesus appeared to her in a dream and told her about him and how he died for her on the cross. And, and he wanted her to be saved, and she committed her life to the Lord. And then uh, she, had, uh, she had been forced to marry this man in Cameroon, and she had a baby. And so when she told the family that she had given her heart to Jesus, they put out a contract on her. The village, the village people, they ran her. They literally ran her out of the community. She picked up her little baby and started running and running because they all threatened her with death. She is now a powerful minister in the nation of Cameroon, getting people saved, including Muslims. Ladies and gentlemen, don't quit on Jesus. Just because things are happening in your nation where people are denying Christ all over the world, the Lord is revealing himself. And so we want you to be saved. We want you to hang in there. Stay woke, church. Stay woke. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, all that is introduction. That's introduction to the message. I haven't started preaching yet. This message today, we've got a message for you. Stay on board. Call your friends in the next few minutes. Tell them, come online. Come online. Tell them, Pastor Carter's getting ready to preach a message, and it'll scare the hell out of you. I want you to tell them that. Call your friends and say, hey, Pastor Carter is, is, is uh, getting ready to preach, and he's got a message. And it's going to scare the hell out of you. If you ha know somebody who needs to have the hell scared out of them, you need to call them and say, get online, get online, give them the number, tell them to get online. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to take a look at a message entitled, The Man Who Went to Hell and Came Back to Tell. The Man Who Went to Hell and Came Back to Tell. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to ask Shelly, we're going to ask Shelly, Shelly Whelan, if she would uh, uh, just lead us in prayer. Shelly, would you do that, please?
We're waiting on Shelly. She'll be here with us. Okay. Maybe she's having trouble with her phone. Well, let's ask... We, let's ask our old standby. He's always ready to pray. Ryan Trugler. I just didn't know if Ryan was on the road today or not. Ryan, come on and lead us in prayer, would you please? I'm at home, Pastor Carter. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> All right. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another day. We want to thank you for breathing the breath of life into us again today. And we also want to thank you for providing all of our needs and all of our means. Lord, we also want to thank you for... Uh, dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins. <clears throat> Lord, we also want you to come down and give the wisdom and knowledge to Pastor Carter to teach us your teach us your word again today and put the fire back into the church as always. And we want to bless this online ministry and bless the people within it. And Lord, we just want to give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Oh, praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, while you're still on, hey, birthday greetings to your precious wife, Tara. Happy birthday, Tara. We have not <laughs> forgotten you. Enjoy your birthday, Tara. And God bless you and your whole family. Thank you, Ryan. Oh, oh, thank you. She, she, she said thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, we're going to ask um, our friend uh, Jackie Fisher if she would come and read our scripture, we're going to stay with that same scripture today. We're going to finish out this series on Is There a Hell? We're going to finish out this series. This is actually part three of a series. I thought it would be a part two series, but we're, this is part three today. And, and she's going to read, turn in your Bible or download Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. We're going to ask Jackie Fisher to come and read Luke chapter 16 verses 19 to 31. Thank you, Jackie. Well, hello, Pastor Carter. God bless you. God bless everyone. Luke 16, 19 to 31. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing, seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, betwixt us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Luke 16, 19-31 Praise God. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. We appreciate you so much for reading that word, Jackie Fisher. Praise God, and God bless you, and Russell, 
and your household meet every need. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a little, a little commercial. If you are in need of Mary Kay products, Mary Kay, this outstanding line of products, you get in touch with me and I'll get you in touch with Jackie Fisher. She's a distributor. We want to help her business. So, ladies, uh, if you have a need for late, uh, Mary Kay products, and men, if you want to get, get a good gift for your wife, uh, then contact me and I'll put you in touch with Jackie Fisher and uh, she'll make sure that you get uh, a quality product. Praise God. Jackie did not ask me to do that, uh, uh, but the Lord gave me the liberty to promote her. And we thank God. We praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, bless God. We've heard the word and uh, we've heard the, the word being read and uh, we've had the prayer and um, we thank God. We, we welcome uh, uh, David Carter online with us now from Dubai and it's near midnight in Dubai. So we've been hearing from him. We always ask him to help us to comment and close us out at the end of the message. <clears throat> but uh, it's so good to have people coming on from different nations. And we have people from many nations listening uh, uh, to the, the videos. And uh, they have access to the YouTube channel. And also every sermon that I, I preach is now uh, being put uh, each week on my website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. Praise God. So we have uh, the message, the weekly message, available for people. And God is changing lives, ladies and gentlemen. God is not doing this thing in a corner. Jackie Fisher read the scripture in Luke, and Jesus tells about the man, <clears throat> the rich man, who was uh, who lived scrumptiously. The Latin version of the Bible called him Dives, Dives, but we really don't know his name. Jesus said he was a rich man, and uh, he lived scrumptiously. And Jesus did give us the name of the poor man. The poor man begged at uh, the rich man's gate every day. He had people to carry him and lay him down so that he could get uh, food, the crumbs, whatever the man's servants over the fence. That's not the way to live. That's not the way God wants us to live. But this poor man, <clears throat> he had to wait for whatever was thrown out into the rich man's dumpster. The rich man never invited uh, this poor man Lazarus to come in and have a meal with him. And uh, it's not a shame how people ignore you when you're down and out. Uh, they don't even see you. They can't even look at you eyeball to eyeball. You don't even exist to them. Well, so happened, uh, like the scripture says, it is appointed unto each of us wants to die and then to uh, face the judgment. So the rich man died, and he was buried, and he went to hell. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a hell. The Pope said two weeks ago, there is no hell. Well, three weeks ago now, the Pope, the Pope who leads millions of Catholics, said there is no hell. Shame on you, Pope. You need to repent. Pope, you need to repent. I tell you, you need to repent and teach the people the word of God. Luke 16, Jesus said, there is a hell. The rich man died and went to hell. Ladies and gentlemen, people who are contending with the Bible, they're contending with the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe the word of God. There is a hell. And for people who don't believe there's a hell and people who continue to contend that there's no hell, keep living. Keep living. One day you're going to die. One day you're going to die. And the Bible says, and whosoever's name was not written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. Well, Jesus gave us a glimpse. And the scripture, all scripture is given to us for, prop, for doctrine, for, for oh, correction, for instruction in righteousness for reproof. And so it pays to study the scripture. Jesus said the, the rich man died and went to hell. And the poor man died and he was laid in Abraham's bosom. That was hell, but it was a different compartment of hell. Before Jesus died on the cross, the righteous dead went to a place in hell called paradise. It was not the place of torment. 
It was a place of luxury where the righteous did awaited uh, the resurrection of Jesus. And so uh, there were two compartments in hell, in the center of the earth. Hell is located, ladies and gentlemen, in the center of the earth. No, it is not some place way out in space. It's in the center of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, we had on the la last week, we talked about some testimonies. There was a miner, a, a construction person who dug wells, dug deep holes in uh, Sweden or one of the Scandinavian countries. And they dug a hole and sent a shaft down into the, into the center of the earth as far as they could go. And they began hearing sounds and screams coming up through that shaft. And so they lowered a microphone and they heard the screams of human beings as though they were in torment, ladies and gentlemen. This is documented, ladies and gentlemen. It's documented. I've got the story. If you want the story, I'll send it to you. I'll send you where you can find it. I will download the story and send it to you. And, and ladies and gentlemen, people have even uh, uh, studied volcanoes, and, and they, they contend that volcanic ash and the, the, the uh, sulfur and the brimstone and the fire comes from the core of the earth. And there are people who have studied volcanoes, and, and tested the sounds coming up from volcanoes, and they can hear the screams of human beings crying as though they are in torment. Ladies and gentlemen, oceanographers, oceanographers have studied the, 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 the bottom of the ocean and, and the floor of the ocean, and on the floor of the ocean there are some places where there are cracks in the floor of the ocean and coming up out of those cracks ladies and gentlemen are are volcanic ashes and fire and brimstone from the bottom of the ocean also <clears throat> these investigators these scientists have acknowledged that eight foot long worms eight foot long worms have crawled out of those crevices in the bottom of the ocean these are all the worms from hell, ladies and gentlemen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Lazarus died, and he was in torment, his body. And when you die, when a person dies and that person is not in Christ, they will get a body, a body, a physical body to enter into hell, and their soul will live forever in that body in hell and be tormented in that body. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to read you some stuff in a few minutes. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to scare the hell out of some of you, and some of you need the hell scares out of you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the Lord's love for us and why he wants us to avoid such a place. The rich man said, I see Lazarus in your bosom, Father Abraham. Well, Abraham and all his seed and the righteous were in a place called uh, uh, paradise in hell and, and the rich man could see across an expanse of space and see the, the righteous dead who had died righteously live, li loving God and obeying God <clears throat> they were living in luxury and so the rich man said send Lazarus send him uh, with some water so he can uh, 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 put some water on the tip of his finger and put it to my tongue he said I'm consumed I'm tormented in these flames. I'm tormented. Ladies and gentlemen, the torment in hell means that once a person dies, the moment that person dies, that person is going to hell if they did not know Jesus Christ. The, con the converse of that is the moment a righteous person dies, a believer, the to be absent from the body is to be at home with the Lord. So it, pr it pays to be saved. It pays to be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to preach salvation until the day God calls us home because many people are still not saved. There are many people still shucking and jiving, still playing church, still playing with God who don't believe, but the time is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is drawing nigh. Terry Chiquito, the time is drawing nigh. Hey, Jeep girl, she's going to be preaching here in two more weeks. The time is drawing nigh. People, you need to get ready now. You meet, need to make a decision today about where you're going to spend eternity. And, 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 and Abraham told 
uh, the rich man? No, Lazarus cannot. He cannot come to where you are. No. And he said, you lived your life. You lived scrumptiously. You lived on the top, on, on, on top of the hill. You lived uh, 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 in, 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 in luxury. And Lazarus had nothing, but you didn't even have the, 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 the love in your heart to give him one crumb from, from your table. Now he's living in luxury, and you're in torment. He cannot come to you, and you cannot come to him. And then the rich man said, well, Abraham, I've got uh, uh, five brothers living in my father's house. Five brothers. Uh, 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 send somebody to preach the gospel to them so they can avoid a place like this. And Abraham said, uh, no, no, uh, they cannot leave here. And, and the rich man said, well, they would believe someone who came back from the dead send someone to preach to them. And Abraham said, no, they have Moses and they have the prophets. In other words, they have the gospel. They have the Bible. They've got preachers, but they won't believe them. No, they will not believe even if someone Return to them from the dead. They're still not going to believe. Ladies and gentlemen, there's some stubborn folks out there. Some of you are stubborn. Some of you watching this program, you're just blessed God stubborn. You're going to go down with the ship. You believe that, that you can live your life any old way. You believe that you can violate the word of God. You believe that you can defy, defy, defy God and, and get in his face and live any way you want to. But the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. I know I'm preaching. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Don't play with God, ladies and gentlemen. Don't play with him. It is appointed unto each of us to die. Every one of us has to die. And then after death comes the judgment. Don't listen to what those people say. Some say, you're in hell now. There's nothing after this life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll contrary. I beg to differ. There is something after this life. After this life, you've got to stand before God in the judgment and give an account for how you lived in the body that God lent you. And if you have not received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you're going to go to hell. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sending you to hell. I'm preaching the word of God. The Bible declares that if you do not have Jesus Christ in your life, you will go to hell. And there will be no second chance, contrary to what a lot of people say. Ladies and gentlemen, you can do penance. You can do all that stuff that they teach in the Catholic Church. You can pray, but you cannot pray somebody out of purgatory. There is no place called purgatory. It's hell. There's a hell. You can't pre pray them out. You can't buy them out. You can't tithe them out. You can't give money to get them out of hell. Ladies and gentlemen, do not be deceived. There is a hell. Jesus lets us know. Read, reread, read again, read it over again. Luke 16, Luke 16, where Jesus talks about hell. There is a place called hell. It's a place of torments. You don't want to go there. Ladies and gentlemen, there have been several people who have written their testimonies, given their testimonies, made videos of their testimonies. I'm going to share with you the testimony of a man who went to hell, and the Lord allowed him to return and come back. This man died in a car accident, and he found himself in hell, and God gave him a chance. You may say, well, that's, that's crazy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when I was in seminary years ago, in 19, 1977, I was preaching. Uh, one of my assignments was to preach one night at a racetrack outside of Philadelphia. I preached at the racetrack where the jockeys and the grooms and the horse tenders and, 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 and people uh, hung out. I mean, there was all kind of corruption where those jockeys lived and the lifestyles they lived. And an old man came up to me and said, Preacher, he said, I died in a car accident. And, and I saw them cover my body in the hospital. The doctor pulled the sheet over me, and my soul left my body. And I was going down a, a long tunnel, and, and I saw a light at the end of the tunnel. And he said, when I got to the end of that tunnel, I saw uh, Jesus standing there with his arms spread out wide, and Jesus said, no, 
no, no, go back and live for me. Go back and live for me. Ladies and gentlemen, the man said he returned, his spirit returned, and he saw his body in the hospital, and his spirit flew back into his body. And, and then uh, the doctors were around uh, writing up their records and discussing the situation, and then he said he heard himself cough <coughs> from under the covers. He coughed from under the sheet, and the doctors in amazement lifted up the sheet, and he set up, and he was alive again. Ladies and gentlemen, these are real stories. That old man told me that story with tears running down his face. But I want to read you excerpts from another story. This is by a man named Carmelo Brennis. I will send you this transcript if you uh, write to me at LeroyCarter69.com. Uh, I will send this to you. This is Carmelo Brennis. Praise God. I will show you where to get the MP3, the PDF, or the document. He said, in 1982, I had an accident in which I died. As death came over me, I felt everything become dark. I found myself walking through a dark tunnel, and some kind of being was taking me. While we walked in this cold and dark tunnel, I began to hear horrific screams and moans. And an intense fear was growing inside of me. I knew that although my body was already dead, I was somehow still alive in this place. This is the testimony of one named Carmelo Brennis. I saw large snakes moving all around, and all the people were crying out for water. Soon we arrived at an open plateau, which had many chambers and divisions. Each contained different people inside. I began to cry out with terror, begging God for mercy. Lord, remember my life. Have mercy. Sheer terror was gripping my soul, and my whole life was passing before my eyes. As we approached some door, I shouted again, Have mercy on me, my Lord. Have mercy on me. I beg you to help me. Help me, Lord. Suddenly there was a silence, and I heard a loud voice say, Stop. The voice shook all of hell. And the being that was taking me by the hand released me. He said, I am not the God of adulterers. I am not the God of fornicators. I am not the God of liars. Why do you call me Lord if I am not a God of those who boast? I felt like I was going to be destroyed, Carmelo Brennis writes. But as the moments passed, God's voice became softer. Come, and I will show you the things going on in this place that are waiting for all who haven't been willing to follow my way and have walked after the imaginations of their own hearts. Hey, David Carter in Dubai, Carmelo Brennis writes, We then went to a place where I saw a woman sitting in a rocking chair. There were still terrifying moans coming from all over that place. At first, she seemed okay, but then her body transformed into a witch and she screamed in agony, burning in flames. She begged for mercy, but the Lord said to me, The wages of sin is death, and those who arrive in this place will never get out again. The Lord showed me many disobedient people, many who were once part of a Christian church. They were crying out and begging for mercy, There and there was no mercy. Mercy could only be found while a person is still alive on earth. Once people are dead... Mercy cannot be reached anymore. As it says, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. We're continuing with the, uh, with the testimony of Carmelo Brennis, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus also showed me a place with some, some kind of boiling oil, and there were people suffering inside, burning in flames and trying to get out, but demons would throw them back in. We walked until we came to a place with people that had once listened to the word of God but never wanted to repent. I told you this, this message is going to scare the hell out of a lot of you. Well, keep on listening because you're going to get saved. You're going to get saved at the end of this message. I even saw pastors, evangelists, believers, and missionaries. Carmelo Brennis, ladies and gentlemen, said in hell he saw pastors, evangelists, believers, and missionaries. They were all there for different reasons. 
I saw one pastor who never believed in the power of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, healings, or baptism of the Holy Ghost. He was begging for mercy and just one more chance to tell the world that speaking in tongues is real and that the Holy Ghost is real and that there is a real freedom in the gospel. But it was too late for him. He could never get out, even though he was a pastor. He, his chance to repent was only possible on earth. Carlo, Carmelo Brenna says, I also saw a missionary in hell. He was there because he asked for money to open a mission in Africa, but he kept half the money for himself. Now he begs for mercy and another chance to return the money that wasn't his. When he saw that Jesus could not help him, he cursed Jesus. I saw people that were once inside the church praising God. Listen to this. I saw people, Carmelo Brenna says, who were once inside the church praising God. Now they only cry out for mercy for their unrepentant sins. They lost their chance to repent after they died. I saw pastors there who robbed tithes and offerings from their churches. They also begged to undo all their bad works, but there was no more chance. Ladies and gentlemen, it gets even worse. Those who die without Christ go to hell, and those who die with Christ go to heaven. Many people believe Many people believe that dying is just stopping this existence. But at death, your real life begins. I'm going to read that again. But at death, your real life begins, either in God's glory or in everlasting condemnation and shame. And I want to add this. Eternity is forever, ladies and gentlemen. You're making that choice right now. You can make your choice right now. Whether you're going to spend eternity in hell or eternity in heaven. Do you want to spend eternity in hell or in God's glory? It's your choice. Ladies and gentlemen, God does not send anybody into hell. God refuses to send anybody into hell. You make that choice. The choice is yours. Carmelo Brennus continues, We continued walking to another horrifying place where there were demons of all types, shapes, and forms, some that had just one arm, one eye, and one hoofed leg. Their faces were like half of a human face, but the rest was just empty. I asked, Lord, what is this? And he said, these are demons of destruction in the homes of all those who are lost. This is the demon that will destroy and destroy without rest day after day. The torment in that place is so terrible. The souls always remember the things they did while on earth. Just like in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man could remember that he had a father and five brothers. You remember all the things you did in your life, good or bad. You remember all your relatives. And this is part of the torment because you so desperately don't want them to enter Uh, Hell also. I'm preaching, ladies and gentlemen, and my sermon is is entitled, The Man Who Went to Hell and Came Back to Tell. Today, there are many people that preach the gospel, warning those on earth to repent. The only one who can save you is Jesus, who is at the right hand of the Father, ready to save you. No, Allah cannot save you. No, Shinto cannot save you. No, Baha'u'llah cannot save you. No, no, playing the numbers cannot save you. No, winning the lottery cannot save you. No, sex cannot save you. No, smoking a a Cuban cigar cannot save you. No, cocaine cannot save you. No, opioids cannot save you. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. That's Acts 4.12. Carmelo Brennus said, I witnessed a woman with two children who were yelling at their mother, Why? Why didn't you take us to Sunday school? Why didn't you allow us to go to church? They cursed her because she never allowed them to hear the gospel. Even today, I still feel pain and terror in my soul, Brennus writes, when I remember that there are even young children in hell. I saw some between the ages of 12 and 14 years old. They also regret many things they did while on earth. 
Many Christians ignorantly say that children can never be lost because they are so young. But I tell you, if a child can distinguish between good and evil, and they are not walking in the ways of the Lord, they also can arrive in that place of torment. He said, we continued walking until we came to a place that was similar to a stadium. There were demons there laughing at lost souls. They were mocking them and tormenting those who were made in God's image. The demons would tear off parts of people and hide them, making the people search for it, for those parts. Demons were getting sadistic pleasure by inflicting pain. The people there desperately thirst for water, but there is none. They regret even the day that they were born, but the worst feeling is for those who knew Jesus, but then walked away from him. I repeat, as Brennus writes, but the worst feeling is for those who knew Jesus, but then walked away from him. If you have walked away from Jesus, if you no longer follow his ways, today, ladies and gentlemen, is the day to come back. Don't be ashamed of what your friends or anyone else will say. It is time for you to run to the presence of God and look for salvation. Do not look for a church that makes you feel good. Look for a church where the Spirit of the Lord moves and repent of all of your sins. It is time for deep repentance, time to cry out to the Lord and run to Jesus. We continue watching the demons torment people. I saw one demon rip out a person's eye and hide it, and that person had to drag himself in pain to find it. The demons were getting pleasure from their cruelty. To some they ripped off arms and legs, but to those who once knew the Lord but died in their sins, their punishment was much worse. They had a double condemnation. Those who never knew God were also in torment, but there is more suffering for those who knew Jesus and then became backsliders. I'm preaching today. My sermon is entitled, The Man Who Went to Hell and Came Back to Tell. When I was there, I felt unspeakable terror in my soul, pure panic. I had such compassion for all the souls that were crying for mercy. Jesus said, I will show you how many things are still waiting for lost souls. We passed another place that had many different burning cells. Inside the cells were souls, but all that was left of them was just charred gray bones. But they could still feel the pain, and they screamed out for mercy from Jesus as he walked by. I found out that these people were once in churches. Some even preached the word of God during their lifetime. Some cast out demons and spoke in tongues while on earth. But now these Christians were down here because one day they decided to turn from the ways of God. We could go on and on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, In hell we saw many who thought they were living holy while on earth, but now they were just begging for mercy and another chance. My soul ached so much for them. We saw a woman who was acting like she was reading the word of God and preaching about John 3.16. This woman had been shepherding an evangelical church for 35 years, but now she was in hell. She's begging for one more chance to forgive her husband. She could not forgive her husband, and she wound up in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, unforgiveness is a sin. If you're someone who cries in the presence of the Lord, you are still under grace and mercy. But if you feel that you cannot cry anymore or pray anymore, if you have stopped your prayer life, you're in great danger. Forgiveness is something special. And that woman never forgave. After 35 years of hard work for God, she lost it all in the end because she could not forgive her husband. And listen to this. My brother would often tell me, the day I die, I'll go to hell and let the demons torment me. But thankfully, he has repented of this foolish belief because the judgment of God has reached him. While recording this message, while I was recording this message, Brennis, Brennis said, my brother is currently lying down, sick with AIDS. He's begging God for a chance, and he's finally turned his heart to Jesus. He does not think the same way anymore and doesn't want to go to that place of torment. 
Thankfully, my brother has accepted Jesus as his Savior. I remember uh, several years ago, one of my siblings called me, called me, told me, pray for me. This is a true story, ladies and gentlemen. He called me, pray for me. I'm dying of AIDS. I'm dying of AIDS. And I prayed for him, and God healed him. Now he's gone back into a situation that is abominable. It's abominable. He won't even talk to me anymore. He won't even talk to me anymore because he knows I preach the gospel. But I still love him, and there's hope for him. He can get out of that uh, uh, horrible situation he's in. He's in an abominable situation, and all he has to do is repent. And you may have relatives in that situation, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus and I, Brennan says, continued walking until we came upon a group of people who called themselves evangelical Christians. Jesus, Jesus explained why they were in hell. In the neighborhood where they lived, there was a drunk that became a Christian. One day his wife got severely ill. He began to go door to door seeking help to bring her to the hospital. When we got to the house of a Christian, he told me, my wife is very sick, he said. I need you to lend me money to take her to the hospital. But the Christians told him, that is what you say. No, we don't have money here. When he went to another Christian's house, they also refused to help him. Eventually, the man's wife died. One of the Christians said, I sure taught that drunk a lesson. He just wanted the money to get drunk, but he didn't fool me. I didn't give him a single penny. Now in hell, Brenna says, they are in fire and torment and deeply regret their evil. These men are tied up with ropes and are still burning. Their skin is falling off from their bodies, and there is no end to the torment, and they remember all the evil that they did. Well, let's wind this up. He says, please listen to me carefully. Here's another man. I was also an evangelical Christian. I prayed for the sick, and God healed them. I prayed for the lame, and God raised them up. I cast out demons and spoke in new tongues, but I had a spirit of pride, vainglory, that made me see my pastor as spiritually smaller than me. I saw many miracles in my ministry, more than my pastor, but I began to think that it was me, that I was the one doing the miracles. In my pride, in my vainglory, I thought that I was super gifted, someone special. I didn't understand that it was the mercy of God that was in my life. When I got to hell, God said to me, I'm not the God of people with vain glory. Many of us stand before the altar, ladies and gentlemen, full of pride and vain glory. Many who sing praises to God begin to be full of pride. Many of God's servants who preach the word and are used mightily by God begin to think that they are overly important. Many people who work in deliverance also get full of pride. I want to tell you that God sees all and he knows your heart. If you have vain glory, pride, or arrogance in your heart, if you see your brother or pastor with disdain, please repent of your sins quickly. It is much better to be humiliated before men than be humiliated in the presence of the Lord. And here's something else he said. We, walk, we continually walk walked until we arrived at some kind of a waiting room. We saw a demon that was shouting, and other demons were presenting themselves before him. Two of them were in the form of beautiful women. Their job was to destroy ministries and lead ministers into sin. Those who serve the Lord must be very careful of Satan's trap. Satan wants to destroy your life, and he can use those people who are close to you, those who do not walk close to Jesus. They can be inst instruments of Satan. And we could go on and on and on. Finally, it might sound crazy, but many Christians wind up in hell because of lying. Christians often just nonchalantly lie in church and think nothing of it. The pastor may ask them a question, and a member just lies to them. But we must remember that a simple lie is what caused God to kill Ananias and Sapphira while in church. Many Christians are in hell because they simply lied to the pastor. They didn't realize that they were lying to God. And the Bible warns us, no drunks, no adulterers, no fornicators, no liars shall inherit the kingdom of God. 
You must know that just because you claim to be a Christian, you can still be unclean before God if you keep sinning. Ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you are a lukewarm Christian, backsliding, or living a double life, bow your head right now before God and beg for forgiveness. Be willing to turn away from your evil deeds. If you don't know Jesus, pray now and ask him for forgiveness. Ask him into your heart. Accept him as your Savior. Ladies and gentlemen, this message was the testimony of a man named Carmelo Brennis. I will send you a copy of his report, how God took him. He died in a car accident. He was killed. He went to hell. But the Lord brought him back to tell his story. Ladies and gentlemen, I have many other stories that I can share with you of people who went to hell and what they saw. Hell is a real place. Don't take it lightly. Don't take this life lightly. If you're not living for Jesus, then you're heading to hell, no matter who you are and what you're doing. The wages of sin is death. God made us fearfully and wonderfully that we might praise him. And if you're not praising God, you're not living for Jesus, there's still hope. If you can hear this message, you can repent today. What must I do to be saved, preacher? The scripture tells us in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Why don't you confess him today? Repent of your sins. Well, what does repent mean, Pastor? Repent means be deeply sorrowful and turn from it. Turn from it. I'm, I'm speaking to some of you out there who are uh, living in same-sex marriages. Yes, you go to church. Yes, you surround yourself with people who praise and worship God, but the wages of sin is death. God never made a man to marry a man or have sex with a man. God never made a woman to marry a woman and have sex with a woman. Yes, you're going to a church where this is popular and the law says it's legal, but ladies and gentlemen, the law does not supersede the word of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. But you can be saved. You can be delivered. Child molester, you can be delivered. Fornicator, adulterer, you can be delivered. Alcoholic, you can be delivered. Whoremonger, you can be delivered. Repent. Ask God to save you, and he will save you. That argument, but I go to church every Sunday, that will not hold up. Jesus will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Get to know Jesus by being born again by the Spirit of God, by being born again by the Holy Spirit. Get to know Jesus. Well, praise God. Praise God. That's about it for this message. You take time out today before you do anything else. Everybody, repent of your sins. Tell God you're sorry for your sins. Ask him to forgive you. And if you have not asked Jesus to be Savior and Lord of your life, ask him now. Some of you need to rededicate your life to Jesus. You need to turn from sin. Walk away from it. Walk out of that. If you're, married to, if you're a man married to a man, walk out of it today. Leave it today. What about my possessions? Well, take what you got and go. Leave it today. If you're a woman and you're married to another woman, you need to walk out of that situation today. Don't linger in it any longer. If you're committing adultery, Walk out of that adulterous relationship today. If you're committing fornication, walk out of that fornication today. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. If you die today in your sins, hell is waiting for you. God did not create hell for you. He created hell for Satan and his demons. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this message I thank you for the testimony of Jesus in Luke chapter 16. I thank you for the testimony of Carmelo Breno. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for the witness of the Holy Spirit. Lord, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquity. Help us, Lord God. Help us to live holy and righteous before you. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquity. Lord God, I praise you and I thank you. Stretch forth your mighty hand to save, Lord, all over the world all over the world, 
where people hear this message, save them. Lord God, save them where they hear the message of the gospel coming through other ministers. Save them, Lord. Let your word not return unto you void and empty. And heal and deliver, God. In Jesus' name, and we thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. Well, if this message has touched you and, and you want more information you, uh, or you have questions or comments, send them to me. You can find me on our Facebook. You can find me at my website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com, or you can send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or text me or call me, 404 205 1101. 404 205 1101. And we thank God for you. Praise God. And if you'd like to send a donation, uh, to this church, contact us. We will receive your donation. Help us as we build this church in western Kenya.